What's the most confusing day at the video games industry's house? Father's Day. Hi, I'm your Tea Time Gamer, and today on A Complete History of Video Games, we're gonna go all Jerry Springer and track down the true father of video games. You don't believe her? I don't believe her. Well, let's find out right now, okay? Let's find out. And a Complete History of Video Games begins now. <laughs> The first of our possible fathers is a man named Steve Slug Russell. The story goes that at MIT's The Tech Model Railroad Club, in 1959, they discovered a computer called the TXO. It was one of the very first computers. Quickly, the Tech Model Railroad Club became enamored with the machine and nicknamed it the Hulking Giant. Then they distinguished themselves as master programmers. But it wasn't until later on, when the PDP-1 came to campus, the first computer with a display, that Steve Russell programmed Space War, the very first video game. Space War was simple. It had two ships, nicknamed Needle and Wedge, and they would fight in outer space. The Tech Model Railroad Club had a term for this. It was called a hack. A hack was simply an impressive feat. The TMRC was so impressed with Slug's hack that they collaborated and gave the game a realistic map of the stars and accurate gravity. Unfortunately, they never figured out how to market this game. If it wasn't for a little bit of dumb luck, Space War would have slipped into history unnoticed and unrecognized, and maybe we wouldn't even have the games industry as we do today. Our second contender for father of the video games industry is a man named Ralph Baer. The story is simple. Ralph Bear is sitting in a waiting room staring at a television when he comes up with the idea for making a game you could play on the television. Ralph Bear worked for a military contract company known as Sanders, and it was at Sanders that he developed the first video game console. Of course, Sanders, being a military contractor and all, couldn't really get into the games market or the toy market or however you want to put it, so Bear ended up selling his idea to Magnavox and the end result was the Magnavox Odyssey, the very first home game system. The Magnavox Odyssey has very little in common with game systems as we know them today. There were no cartridges or discs, there were only 11 games pre-programmed onto the machine. Graphics were very simple back then to the point where they developed translucent overlays that you'd put on your TV to simulate the graphics. However, one game is of note, a game with two paddles and a ball, called Hockey. I mean, what game did you think it was? Unfortunately, the Magnavox Odyssey was a massive flop due to high prices and misleading advertising. And like Steve Russell, Ralph Baer almost went into history unnoticed and unrecognized. But if it wasn't for one man, one final possible father, these two men would be irrelevant. Our final father, Nolan Bushnell, has both the loosest and the strongest claim to being the father of video games. It was while in college he discovered Space War. And once he graduated, he tried to adapt Space War into Computer Space, the very first computerized arcade game. Computer Space, while being a breakthrough, was also a massive flop. This was due to the game's complexity. It had a manual the size of an encyclopedia, and it was just impenetrable to new players. And mind you, at this point, just about everybody was a new player. We were all the dirty, filthy casuals. This flop nearly bankrupted Nutting, the company that put out Computer Space, but Nolan Bushnell looked at Nutting Incorporated and said, hey, if those guys can run a company, so can I. So he founded his company and named it Atari, a term that comes from the Japanese game Go and roughly means check as we would use it in chess. The second person he hired was named Al Alcorn, and he gave Al Alcorn a simple task. Basically a go sit in the corner with your coloring book while the adults do all the real work. He told Alcorn to design a game with two paddles, a ball, and a score. Bushnell knew where the games industry was going. Games would be more complex, with more encyclopedia-sized manuals. That is what the market wanted. That is what the market needed. And he could not have been more wrong. Alcorn produced Pong. Pong had one instruction. Avoid missing the ball to reach high score. I don't think I need to tell you this, but Pong was huge. But it didn't get that way all by itself. Remember that Magnavox game that sounded suspiciously like Pong? Well, Magnavox took Atari to court over this, but they ended up settling outside of court for $700,000 and the rights to everything Atari made for the next year. So Atari took a year off to swim Scrooge McDuck style through the pile of quarters they just made, and Magnavox ended up suing all of Pong's imitators, cementing Pong's success. What a bunch of suckers. So who onyxed that cloister to create the video games industry? Let's find out right now. Steve Russell in the case of the video games industry. 
You are not. Yeah, sorry slug, but the truth is you didn't actually create the first video game. That honor goes to William Higginbotham. The only reason we didn't bring it up before is nothing ever came of Tennis for Two. But we also have Ralph Baer here, creator of the first video games console. Ralph Baer, in the case of the video games industry, you are not the problem. Yeah, Ralph, it's kind of hard to say that the video games industry wouldn't exist without you. True, you created the first video game's home console, but you kind of failed to popularize it. What about Nolan Bushnell, the creator of the first coin-operated arcade game? In the case of the video games industry... You are not! <laughs> well, Nolan, with all the controversy surrounding Pong, it's hard to give it to you for that. And if we gave it to you for computer space, we may as well give it to Steve Russell for Space War. But I guess I've been lying to you this entire time. Truth is, there is no definitive father of the video games industry. When it comes right down to it, who the father is is a matter of opinion. So why don't you share your opinion with me down below, and next week, I'll pick up with mine. We're also going to get into the proper history of video games. If you like what we're doing here, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button, which is, um, somewhere. That like button really helps out, too. Thank you so much for watching, and have a day.